What's up, slackers? Um, got some really cool stuff to show you guys today. Uh, I finally got all my cooling hardware, and uh, I didn't want to open up the chip until we got video footage of it. So, uh, if you're just watching for the first time, I got this uh, killer board, the Gigabyte C621 or a six stream. This thing is for the big 28 core monster. So, uh, this board is huge. I mean, come on, look how big this is. Remember, it's the motherboard version of me. So, there's a couple things that we got. So, they, we're gonna be doing a couple different uh, plans with this type of board. So, uh, first, I got the air cooler from Dynatron. Uh, I'll show that up in a little bit after we do uh, the unboxing of the chip because you can see how it can go on. Uh, we ended up getting some cool stuff from EK. EK sent in uh, their new velocity block, which is for pretty much, it's a totally different setup from like the normal X299 and the Z like 390 stuff. So it's a completely different type of cooling um, socket mechanism. So we need to get all new cooling hardware to do anything. So I got the, the new AK block and they, they also were nice enough to set up over their uh, 360 water RGB water cooling kit, which is pretty awesome. So we're gonna take this whole kit. We're first gonna do air and then we're gonna go into like a full water setup because obviously this monster 28 core is like pretty crazy, you know? I mean, it pull, <laughs> it can do a bunch of craziness. And then we'll get into what we have to do for liquid nitrogen stuff, because that's a whole nother uh, pain in the butt thing that we have to do. So let's get into opening up this chip because I've been saving this chip for you guys on video and I didn't want to open it without you guys. So let's get into opening it. We'll take out the, uh, the French knife. She's always been good to me. So let's open this monstrosity up. Now, if you look on like new egg and a couple different spots, this thing is like going for whew, like probably about $3,100. I mean, for such a little thing, it's so damn expensive. Ooh, check this out. The power of creativity. So it's a 28 core, 48 threads. It has a turbo up to 4.3. For 28 cores, 4.3 for a turbo is pretty, uh, Pretty badass, I must say. But uh, obviously, we're gonna take that even to higher performance. I wanna see what like the benefits are gonna be on air cooling versus water cooling, and then we're gonna go into liquid nitrogen cooling. So just to, we'll, we'll take out the chip even more, kinda see what else is on here. It's pretty much, we've got the chip itself and the package. Look at that monstrosity. That thing's huge. I mean, let's let's take the, pu the puppy out and I'll, I'll, I'll share. I'll show you compared to a 9980XE, which is the 18 core. So look at that puppies. 18 core, 28 core. This thing's huge, absolutely massive. And it's like, it's heavy too. So we have a couple of plans for this chip too. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go through over different uh, cooling thing, stuff with it, but we're also gonna end up sanding it. So we're gonna end up lapping the top and see what, how much of a difference it's actually gonna make. So I'll do a step-by-step -step video on it. And then we're also gonna delete it. So Roman's gonna send over a uh, deliter for me. So we're gonna end up popping the top and then we're gonna try liquid metal and do all different types of cooling solutions on it. So a lot of big stuff ready for this one. So it should be cool. Let's see what else is in the box before. Let me put this puppy back so that we don't mess it up. Cause three, I don't have three grand to go get another one. So I'm gonna, try to take care of this one as much as possible. But we're also still gonna beat it up a little bit. So the other thing we got is we got a little instruction booklet. I'm not sure how much instructions you need, but apparently they send you an instruction booklet. So probably warnings on how to put this thing in the socket because if, if you don't know, this thing's kind of a pain in the butt. The socket mechanism is based upon, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. It's just going over how you're gonna end up putting it in the socket and everything. So. I'm gonna actually show you a little bit today, kind of like what my issues are and uh, what we're gonna have to do to combat that. So so the other thing I wanna go over is kind of show off like the air cooler I got. So I ended up buying a cheap cooler. These were, I think it was like 40 bucks on Amazon. Um, I just wanted something to test just for air. And uh, this is kind of, it's, a, it's actually a pretty cool power supply. It's a server power supply, or not power supply, uh, cooler so we're gonna end up using this if you could tell it's got pre-applied paste I think what we're gonna do is just wipe off that paste or maybe it will I'll use the paste first and then try it with another 
different base. So, but that's pretty much it. I mean, it has one plastic piece. Uh, the cooler, like I said, is really weird. You get a, you get a basically a plastic piece that goes over. They only give you one because uh, there's two versions of this socket. There's a, a wider version and then a, um, a thinner version. So this is the thinner version. So basically you put this on top and then what you do is you put it on here and then you end up screwing it on like that. You end up, it's basically, it only puts four screws on it, which is kind of weird to me. I figure like you would actually try to like do it all, but I don't know. I think Intel kind of dropped the ball on this, on these type of, uh, socket mechanism I think they would really benefit for something like kind of the way like Threadripper is and having a decent uh, socket mechanism so if they're watching hopefully they see it and uh, make that change but I guess we'll have to see what they do so let's move this out of the way All right so uh, the other one was we have is the EK velocity block I mean this thing is pretty bad dude I mean it's heavy as hell it's it's also expensive too I think uh, I'll put everything in the link in the description on how to get each one of these components from Amazon. Um, they're, they're my affiliate links, so if you uh, want to support me, you can buy from there and just go through my links. But uh, yeah, so we'll open up the, the velocity block. I mean, this thing is like, feels heavy. It's, it's probably the heaviest water block I've actually felt. It almost feels like a one of those full, like uh, all-in-one blocks, you know, like where it actually does the VRM and, and uh, the CPU itself. So let's open this up real quick, kind of check it out. what it's all about yeah when I was looking at cooling solutions I mean there's not many actual companies that actually really have much which is kind of disappointing for such a big platform um, what's really cool is I heard a lot of people say uh, different things like oh the, this platform doesn't have a, uh, many chips on it and, and you know what's crazy is if you actually look up the 3647 uh, socket there's tons of chips. You, I, I think the cheapest chip you can get in there is like 250 bucks, and it's like a 1.7 gigahertz, uh, um, I think six core, 12 threads. I mean, it's pretty crazy, like all the options for it. It reminds me of the SR2 when the EVGA SR2 came out, and you had all these different processors, and you could run single processor, dual processor, all that stuff, so. Um, forever, whoever said that, I mean, you really look up the options, because there's a heck of a lot of options. So, let's get into this block and, uh, Show, see what's uh what's in here. So we got some uh, RGB stuff because obviously it's everything now is pretty much RGB. Um, we got some uh, screws. Um, like I said before, even with the other cooler, it's only four screws that hold it down. It uses the the normal socket um, uh, uh, socket uh, mechanism, which is I'll, I'll show you in a second. It's kind of weird because when we're gonna do L and two, it's gonna be kind of a, a pain. So I'll show that in a little bit, but. But basically you get four screws and an allen wrench and then you get the block itself which is to be honest it's quite beefy i mean i guess the board is so beefy imagine putting this on there you could lead somebody up with this too so let's uh take a like a closer look on it and see how see how nice it is obviously you can tell it's never been opened so i'll try to break the seal and see what kind of what we're dealing with here because this is the first time I've opened it, so obviously we have something for RGB, so we can control RGB on it. And man, this thing's pretty nice. Just the nickel plated. It's big, obviously. Um, you'll see it has six sections, which I'll show you on the socket in a little bit. But basically you tighten here, tighten here, tighten here, and tighten here. It's the same with the air cooler. It's actually quite easy um, to... Uh, tie down and then you obviously have the nice flat surface I think what we'll do is too is probably maybe go through this and sand this too to see how much of a benefit it'll give us because a lot of the times um, just because it looks flat doesn't mean it actually is flat you'll see when we go through the lapping video on this on this chip it's pretty funny taking a three thousand dollar chip and totally killing the warranty but it's all good that's uh that's why I'm doing it for you guys so let's uh put this one back and I think it's heavy overall really nice design kind of pretty impressed with it um, I want to see how well it cools compared to the air cooling because I have a feeling that it's gonna actually be quite nice compared to air cooling I, I don't think air cooling is really gonna be um, really situated for this box I mean if you have enough money to even pay for this system you're still looking at like five grand like two grand for the board Three grand for the chip. You're talking about five grand. If you do, if you're gonna buy an air cooler for it, I mean, you might as well spend the extra cash 
That's probably why this is priced like the way it is too, where it's $250. It's pretty expensive, but to be honest, it's probably most likely worth it as a cooling solution because there's not many options out there. So, and obviously we have the RGB EK liquid cooling kit. I'm gonna save this for another video where we just do a review on the video. So I'm not gonna open it right now, um, but we will end up being using this for um, the setup. So let me take that out of the way. So now the other thing I wanted to talk about is we have our trusty liquid nitrogen pot. Now this is a Kingpin cooling T-Rex. This is actually an early version which is basically an ES version that uh, Vince gave to me and uh, I've been using for a couple of years now. So, but we're, we wanna use this on the, this big chip. So one of the issues we have, it's actually easier if I take the board and bring it up. All right, so we have the uh, Gigabyte C621 board and we have this, this is the socket. This is a 3647 socket. Obviously you see how huge it is, right? But if you notice what, like on the air cooler, we used one, two, three, four, right here. And then these two are just basically posts. So it's good. It's kind of weird. I'm, I'm not really, really impressed with this type of socket mechanism. It makes it difficult compared to like X299 and then um, Z390 where you basically have it, it has its own retention. But um, so it's kind of causing a bunch of issues. So uh, let me show you why. So when you have this down, and we take off, I've actually removed all the screws, so you will be kind of careful with it. So if you notice, like this is basically the socket mechanism. You see the four bolts, one, two, three, four. And then it, it, there's basically nothing else on the chip, just pins. So it's a little gnarly. We want to kind of be careful with all the pins, you know? So I'll show you in a little example of, we put the CPU in, this thing's a monster. Can't get over how big it is. Definitely one of the monster CPUs I've ever seen. So you basically pop that in there, and what happens is you basically, I'll get the air cooler and show you. Where's that? When the socket's down like this, pop this on. All you do is basically go in, make sure those two sides are logged, are in, actually. This looks like a different version. No. Yeah, this is a wrong version. So look at that. I don't even have the right cooler. So, so much for that, huh? <laughs> That's the only way you find out sometimes. So let's see here. Let's make sure this other water block. I didn't even realize that when I bought it, that, that Dynatron is actually incorrect. So, we're gonna have to return that and basically get a new one. What's fun about doing this on video, then you can see how I messed up. <laughs> so you'll see here, like this block, it's just gonna go over. And you basically put one, two, three, four screws down and tighten it down. I mean, it's pretty as simple as that. I obviously you can't do it on the other one. All right, so that, that's pretty easy with that cooler. But one of the big problems I have is when we want to put this on it, right? This is a, like I said before, a T-Rex block. But when I put this on there, you can't really tell by basically me putting it on there, but there's screws in the way. So number one is these two screws are in the way. And I also have nothing to um, mount it or screw it down. So it causes a big problem. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I actually came out and I'm gonna actually make my own piece. Uh, one of the cool things about doing overclocking and stuff like that, and nowadays it's kind of easier because a lot of companies support you and, and help you out with different things, but um, Asus makes one, um, but they're not obviously supporting me right now. So uh, I gotta make my own, um, and especially this is a gigabyte board, so why would they, anyway. But um, yeah, we're gonna make our own mechanism. So. What I'm gonna end up doing is probably taking off the socket completely. And I came up with my own little, this is just a cardboard document, or cord, cardboard mock-up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use, there's three, basically three holes in that one section. Let me make it so you can see. So you have these two, one hole here and two holes there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a back plate like so. So this will go onto the bottom of the board. What we can do is, I'll show you real quick. 
actually in the board. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to have a basically three posts. We're then going to take the pot, go up, and then what I did is that we're going to make a bracket too that basically goes down and goes over the pot. Right? Now this is just a, a mock-up version. i got to still do all the drawings and send over to my buddy. We're going to end up doing uh, laser cutting some stainless steel and I'm thinking about actually doing it as like a beard so that way we can use it for like other other stuff and kind of have fun with it it's also going to be able to use uh because we're going to have to put a lot more LM2 in it so if I screw down here I'll be able to tension the pot onto the the CPU which is important because otherwise it, the system won't poop so what we'll end up doing is I'll end up screwing all these down where I can get the maximum pressure and then I can put it on this so that way I can actually get more LM2. Yeah, so that's pretty much my liquid nitrogen setup. So uh, we gotta obviously put this thing on liquid nitrogen because there's no way I'm not gonna do that, so. But uh, but yeah, so we're gonna actually have to wait for this piece to get made. Um, I'm gonna get another air cooler because obviously the other one doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> my bad, but uh, that's what I get for waiting for video But because I always wanna show you guys how I see it for the first time, so. Um, but yeah, so we got a, a lot of plans coming up. I'm going to be doing an uh, air cooling setup on this, kind of show off how what you can do on air, then water, and uh, that's pretty much it. So um, I got some big news about uh, we're going to have a live stream every week. So I'm not sure what the name is going to be called yet. I'm going to actually putting it up now. I don't know if it's going to be in time whether they release this video, but it's going to be Thursdays at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So basically New York City time. So I don't want to hear anybody complain. This is so that way people in the U.S. and Europe can be a part of it. So um, I, don't know, I don't know what the first stream is going to be yet, but uh, we're also planning on a Ryzen Day stream too. So, But uh, stay tuned to the channel and uh, also check out on Twitter because I usually release a lot of information on there. But uh, that's pretty much it. So slacker out.